Greetings everybody, this is the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage and I'm making a video today for you, uh, I'll probably do it in a few different installments and this has to do with how should you go about thinking on how you're going to move a sewing machine that you have bought. Now a lot of times people might be out and they do not expect to find a vintage sewing machine and they may um, be driving around on a Saturday morning uh, and there's a yard sale or a, or a garage sale and people stop, hey, pull over and you find a machine. Or you might come across one in a thrift store. You had nothing to do or you were, you know, you were in a thrift store for some other reason and there's a machine. Or even if you go, <clears throat> you find one listed online somewhere, uh, let's say it's a classified. Maybe it's on Kijiji or Craigslist or some other classified online and um, you see it and you want to go, you know, they tell you where to where to find the machine. You go to the person's house and you make a decision to buy it. Let's say you've decided to buy the machine and now you need to get it home. I want to talk to you all about a few things that could really help you. Many of you may never have had to, maybe you've never bought a machine yet or even if you've had um, had a machine that you bought, you weren't sure how to move it. And this is something you'll want to kind of know ahead of time. So I've got, uh, this is the little table with my 185J. I thought I would use it as an, ex as an example. Uh, let's see, I'm, I'm gonna open up the top here. I've already opened it up once, which is why you see the little extension already popped out. So uh, you see the 185, it's sitting here. Uh, it is currently listed as available for sale. Now, one of the things you will notice when you open up a sewing table is uh, a couple of things. First, you're going to see hinges. Now, the hinges look different depending on the brand. Singer hinges from the vintage era typically look like this. They look like, oh, they're a little bit bigger around than a quarter. I'll zoom in so you can actually get a better look. They're going to look like that. And sometimes they'll look a little different, but that's pretty much a classic Singer um, machine table hinge. <laughs> uh, it's, a lot, it's a long description there. Now, uh, one of the things that you're going to want to think about is, are you going to take this machine and the table? This one is not too bad. Two people can carry this table and machine. And when you, when you do this, uh, if you have Maybe you have a pickup truck, or maybe you have a big van, which is more unusual these days, and you can simply leave the table, uh, leave the machine in the table. You've got strong people, you pick it up, you put it in the truck, you secure it, obviously, and you take it home. Well, that's kind of an ideal situation, but it's not always ideal. I don't own a truck, I own a sedan. And I'm gonna to talk to you guys uh, a couple of things. First thing I wanna talk about is how whether to remove a machine from a table and how to go about it. And then the next video I'll talk about once you've done that, uh, whether you remove it or not, how do you get it in your car or your vehicle? And what's a good way to do this so that you don't hurt the machine and you don't hurt your table? And there's a way to do it. I've done it for years. Now, one of the first things that might have occurred to you if you were uh, new at this uh, transporting of sewing machines, is that you might have seen this and thought, oh, I see these little uh, screws here. Maybe the machine releases this way. Although it can, I highly, highly recommend that you do not remove these hinges. These hinges um, are, <laughs> I often make videos and talk about things that are underappreciated. If you look closely, let me open up this portion of the table and you can see better. This machine is literally hovering on these two hinges and then at the bottom of it is actually resting or braced against the back of the table. And that's how virtually all domestic sewing machines uh, are mounted. Now you have to remember back in the day people used to be, um, people had smaller homes and they wanted their sewing machine cabinets or tables to camouflage, to blend in with the decor of the house so that they could, you know, pretend, you know, quote unquote, look like furniture, even though everyone knew it was a sewing table. Uh, but that was their goal. For me, with my own machine, if I have a machine that belongs to me, <clears throat> I like the aesthetic of the machine and I, and I leave it up so that uh, it becomes part of the decor of my house. But you might not be that 
person and that's fine. But the, the bigger issue here is um, you have to decide is the machine uh, coming out of the table before you move it. Again, you don't always have to do this. If you have strong assistance uh, and you have two people and you have a place where you can uh, put this um, upright, some of you may decide not to even take this out. But what if the machine is downstairs in a basement or upstairs and it's a big one? What if it's a big cabinet like the uh, cabinet I showed you guys the other day, the white rotary? That's the heaviest piece of furniture I think I've ever lifted without the machine in it. So there are going to be times when it's going to be so heavy or, or unsecure to move that you may think, gosh, you know, this would be a lot easier to move if I had the machine out of the table. My first thought is, do your best to move it without taking the machine out. But if you, if you get in a situation where you think, gosh, you know, we're really going to have to get the machine out to get both of them home and then we'll put them back together. There is a way to do it, but taking this off is not. Now, I've seen uh, tables before that were empty and when someone removed a machine, uh, you know, I might see that there's just an empty sewing table in a thrift shop somewhere. And uh, sometimes these pins have been taken out. You can get replacement pins, especially for singers. But remember, these, these uh, hinge pins, this is the hinge and the pin is actually inside the machine at the moment. That's why you can't really see much of it. There's the little pin. And of course it pivots when the machine comes up and that's how the machine uh, raises and lowers and, and yet stays in the table. But if you look at this screw here, this is a Phillips head, you'll note that these uh, hinges are screwed into wood. And any of you who've ever had to take screws out of wood and put them back in, as you know, if you take the screw out and put it back in, you, the wood as a, as, a, as, a, as a substrate or material to grab onto the screw is not as, uh, is not as tight. And so your, your hinges are going to be more loose than they were originally, and that's not a good thing. There are ways to go about that. If you have a table, or let's say you made the mistake of taking these out, I may, I may think about doing a video on how to fix that problem. I don't really have that problem with any of my tables at the moment. Now, if, if I'm highly recommending that you not remove the hinge, then you might think, well, how am I going to get the table out? Well, I'm going to show you Virtually all sewing machines, every sewing machine I have ever put my hands on has the option to be removed without taking out the hinges. The companies that made these were smart. They knew that the, the machine might have to be taken out typically for service. If someone wanted to bring it in for service, you didn't want to have to bring the whole table in. So we're going to take a look at this and I'm going to show you the secret of how these machines, um, how they come out of the table and what is so amazing about some of the hardware here. Now I'm going to be pulling this up and I have some, uh, a spool of thread here and I have to watch it. Sometimes when you pull the machine up, the, the spool, uh, some of the newer spools of thread are a lot taller uh, than, the, than the older ones. So a lot of the older spools, some of them were you know, little short things. In any case, uh, I'm pulling the machine up and I'm putting the, the brace back down make sure my cord doesn't get pinched here when I do this. Something you want to watch generally anytime you're pulling your, your machine up. Notice that the cord here, it has a little place to be, but it can wiggle out and you don't want to pinch the cord. These cords are fine, but you don't, you could easily do that. But that's not the purpose of this video. Okay guys, so you've got your machine up and now what you're going to do is you're going to tilt it back as if you were looking underneath it because you are looking underneath it. Now, when I tilt this machine back, it is hanging on these two pins. And if I let it sit, I, it will do so. It's, those pins are pretty impressive. But you know what? Let's give the table and the hinges a break. I'm going to take, this is a, like a hot hand out of the kitchen or something. I'm just going to take something. You could take a small pillow or something kind of wedge it behind the machine. You need enough space so the machine, you know, you have to watch out because uh, your best bet is to have someone holding this so that you don't want the machine to fall on your hand. Um, that would not be great at all. But again, you don't have to, to, to I'm just basically putting a, a little bit of a, let's see if I can pull this back, just a little bit of a, a cushion for the machine as it rests back. It takes a little of the stress off, but you definitely want the angle 
of the machine tilting backward far enough that um, you know you're going to be okay. Just you want to make sure you watch that. Now, okay, everyone, I've gotten a different camera angle here. I want you to see this from the side. Now, a lot of the old machines are black, and that's why you're going to really want a flashlight. Um, it can be very difficult to make out some of this stuff. That's one of the reasons I wanted to use the little 185 because it's got this pistachio color. A little bit easier to see this. I'm going to zoom in. Now, now you can see from this angle a little bit, bit, bit better. You'll see, of course, the, uh, the hinge, the little round plate where the hinge installs. And then there's a pin and that pin there are two of them of course there's one on the other side and each of them goes into um, slots or holes if you will in the back of the bed of the machine which you normally can't see because it's all pretty flush in here now I'm going to sh shift angles again because once you see where the the pin of the hinge is right below that okay uh, somewhere between the edge of the bed of the machine and uh, further down on that pin is going to be set a set screw okay guys I've got the camera I'm actually holding it here because I need this a certain angle when you look underneath a machine you're gonna see lots of bolts and, and uh, screws down there there's lots of hardware Virtually all of this you should never touch. There is no need to touch it. A lot of it was locked into place when the machine was made. There are only two screws that are involved in removing any of these machines from their tables. Now, uh, if you look uh, on the right, there's a little foot that supports the machine. Um, on, there's, there's two of them, one above and one below and there is a slot in the table. You can see those slots. If I, if I put, a, I'll show you, you can see here's one pin. There's a slot in the wood of the table and here's the other one right there. Now I'm gonna move the camera and I'm gonna actually have to get under the machine, sort of, to really show this to you. This is a very, uh, it's, it's not, you know, difficult once you see it you'll know what you're looking at okay now notice right here don't go anywhere screwdriver notice that right here guys you see the table opening you see the pin and now I'm going to point to the screw it's right here or there's one of them right there okay the other one is on the right side of the machine and of course it's the same type of screw it's going to be a little harder to see because it's hiding right here under this foot. So when you're looking, let's say you've got the machine tilt back, uh, you really want to get someone's assistance with this. Let's see if I can get the camera there. That's a little bit better angle. So this screw right here is, uh, they're typically called barrel screws, but these are the set screws that are used to keep your mach sewing machine mounted in the table. Now that might not seem very exciting to a lot of people, but you know it's pretty impressive that basically two small screws hold your machine uh, hovering in the air all of its life, basically when it's being stored. Okay guys, so basically when you go to get these screws out, you want to think about the screwdriver. If you don't have a screwdriver that's the right size, you could easily damage the screws or strip them. And these screws have a lot of importance. They get no attention and love in this life. But I have to tell you, I know it makes me sound so nerdy to talk about the quality of the steel of the screws, but it really matters. Um, it's just impressive, you know, that these screws, you know, they still work. Now, if you need to, you can always uh, use maybe a drop of sewing machine oil or WD-40. I typically have not had a ton of difficulty getting them out. Um, just probably because they were they were lubricated when they were put in and they're not really exposed to heat typically. But always be prepared because again, like anything else, if it gives you a lot of resistance and you can't undo the screw, don't don't force it. You know, give it a ch give it a chance to uh, to loosen up with some oil. Again, a penetrant like WD-40 is fine, or any there are others you can use. And so uh, 
there are two ways to go about this. You can take the screws, again, have someone hold the machine when you're doing this. You have to kind of get down below the lip of the bed of the machine. That's one of the reasons it's so tough to see. Um, and a flashlight will help you because, you know, when this is black, when you have a black machine and you have black screws, you know, it can even, it can even be tougher uh, to see. But once you get your flashlight, you'll find them. Now, you have two options. You can take the screws all the way out and make sure you have them in your hand and put them in a, in a, in like a Ziploc bag or something. You don't want to lose them. The other option is to take the screws out partially, which once you get them out far enough, the machine will literally come loose and it will slip out. When you, when you have the screws out or loosened, you simply lift the machine up and it'll slip right off the pins and you'll have two little, two little pins uh, sticking or dropping down as it, as it, as it, as the case may be, but they're just like two little fingers and that's, that's what's been holding the machine to the table, believe it or not. Now, the other things to think about here are, what if you have a machine, where is your foot pedal and where are your cords? Some of the machines will have pedals and cords that can simply be unplugged and removed separately. Sometimes they're in a drawer, they're not even plugged into the machine. This 185J, its foot pedal is hardwired into the motor. What that means is you need to have an idea of where, where the foot pedal is and, and generally is there anything attached to this machine, whether it's with cords or what have you. You, need, you really want to know this before you go to take this out of the table. Because if, if let's say it has a knee controller, like my white rotary, and it's wired to the knee controller, if you haven't unplugged it, you're going to have a cord tugging at you when you're trying to hold this heavy machine and get it out of the table. So I'm speaking from a lot of experience here and trying to share it with, with all of you. Um, but uh, one of the things to mention, if you decide to take these little um, pin set screws out partially, which is also fine, you can lift the, table, uh, lift the machine out of the table, but before you go carting the machine off into the next step, which is to get things loaded into your vehicle, you want to take your screwdriver and just, you don't have to tighten them all the way back, but put those set screws back far enough that they're not going to go um, disappearing on you. Because if you go walking across someone's front lawn as you've, after you've bought their sewing machine, you know, those screws will be really tough to find like a needle in a haystack. So uh, again, you can get, with singers, you can get replacements. Uh, that's how many singers were made. But, you know, I really love having the original screws. So just, again, this is just word to the wise. Take your time. Don't be in a hurry. I know it, you know, it can be, you know, you're, if you're in someone's house and you're, you bought the machine, you want to get it out, you want to get going, but take your time. Make sure you're doing this in, in ways that will not create problems for you uh, once you get the machine home. So in the next video, we will talk about, okay, now that you've gotten the machine and table to your vehicle, whether you've gotten the machine out separately or whether it's still in the table, that will determine how you load this. I'll do a video on how to, how to strategize loading this into a vehicle. I know that sounds a little silly. You think, well, what's the big deal? It's just a piece of furniture. No, it's not. It, this is actually uh, an incredibly well-built cabinet, but it's holding a machine that weighs as much or more than a bowling ball and it can move. So there are certain things you want to think about when you go to load up uh, a machine. You know, how do I get it out of the wherever it's in, a store or someone's house, and get it into your vehicle? So we'll talk about that in the next video. Anyway, thanks for hanging in there with me. I had to do a little hand-holding on the camera here. This is one of those weird angles, but I really wanted to show this to all of you because many of you will try to move the table with the machine in it, and that is also my preference. But I can tell you I've had situations where if the machine has to come out of the table, it can be really helpful knowing what's the best way to get it out of the table uh, and making sure that you keep the machine and these very important screws. Uh, they don't get any respect, but they're, they're crucial for holding your machine in the table. How do you get everything home in one piece? Um, and then we'll talk about installing the machine back in the, into the table. It's not going to be that tough. It's getting the machine and table into your vehicle and getting it home and deciding if you're going to take the machine out or if you're going to leave it in the table. So anyway, thank you for watching. It occurred to me when I was doing this cabinet series.
that I hadn't really talked about moving tables, and I, I hadn't seen any videos on it. You know, moving a sewing machine is a little different, not hard, but there's certain things you want to think about ahead of time. You will be much less frustrated if you consider these things before you cart your new to you vintage sewing machine home. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. Have a great weekend and um, keep the ideas for videos coming to me. I, I've, I've been watching your comments and I'm going to try to get through a backlog of uh, video ideas. And uh, I so appreciate you watching. Subscribe to the channel if you like. And uh, we'll see you next time.